Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Ghost Stories in Folklore. Well, my friends, this Christmas I am bringing back an old Victorian tradition of telling ghost stories at Christmas time. In the next few videos, I will be sharing with you 21 ghost tales. And what I would like you to do is leave a comment down in the comments section of the title of your favorite tale from each video. For now, let's get started with the first seven ghost stories and folklore from Christmas time. This one is entitled, A Chilling Ghost in My Eyes. A few Christmases ago, we were invited to stay with their friends at their beautifully restored house. My daughter's room was the sweetest, just down the corridor from ours. It had candy-colored teacups on the wallpaper, an adorable four-poster single bed, and a lovely little in-suite bathroom. The first night, we all slept soundly, replete with food, wine, and gossip. On the second night, we all retired slightly earlier. I awoke around 2 a.m., seeing a light flickering. I walked down the corridor to my daughter's room. She was in there wide awake watching a video on my laptop. She too had awoken and could not get back to sleep. I closed the laptop, tidied up the little bedroom and straightened up the bedclothes. I tucked her back in and sat down on the edge of her bed to stroke her hair. As I sat there, half snoozing myself, I realized that the room felt rather chilly, despite the window being shut tight. It was very strange. My daughter's eyes were closed as she was drifting off. I pulled up the blankets around her. Night, darling, I whispered. Night, night, mommy, she replied, and half opened her eyes. Suddenly, her pupils widened in fear. Tears sprang out of nowhere. Mommy, what's wrong with your face? She cried, recoiling in horror and seeking beneath their covers. I felt a rush of cold air down my spine and a thud in my ears, like a door being slammed a long way away. My back felt icy. I could feel the presence of something right behind me. Something ancient and evidently rather irritable. I stood up with a jump, brushing the air away. There was a loud hum, as though the whole room was vibrating, and then, just like that, it was gone. My daughter and I looked at each other, open mouth. What just happened? What did you see? I asked. Your face, replied my daughter. It wasn't you. It was like like someone else was looking at me through your eyes. This next one is a ghostly queen returning to her home. Anne Boleyn is notorious as the second of King Henry VIII's ill-fated wives. To marry Anne, Henry spent years seeking a divorce from his first wife, Catherine of Aragon and went on to sever England's relationship with the Catholic Church in Rome, forever changing the course of British history. Despite the lengths he went to ensnare her, Henry Sue grew tired of Anne, and choosing to believe the idle gossip surrounding her, had her beheaded in 1536. A number of reports exist of the ghost of Anne Boleyn, but perhaps the most affecting is the version said to haunt her childhood home, Hever Castle in Kent. Some say that every Christmas Eve, the spectral figure of Anne Boleyn can be seen slowly guiding across the bridge over the River Eden toward her family home, where she was at her happiest.
This next one is a true ghost story talking about the former prison of Alcatraz. The island of Alcatraz off the coast of San Francisco has a long and spooky history. In its early days, Native Americans allegedly used to banish miscreants to the island as punishment, where they were reportedly plagued by local spirits. Alcatraz, of course, became a notorious federal prison in 1934, housing criminals such as Al Capone before it was shut down in 1963. Today, visitors to the island report hearing screams, the clanging of metal doors, and the sound of voices within the walls. One of the more famous tales associated with the island supposedly occurred in the 1940s, when the warden, James Johnston, held a Christmas Day party at his residence for the staff at the prison. The good cheer is said to have been brought to a swift halt when an apparition sporting mutton-chop whiskers in a gray suit appeared. The temperature in the room plummeted and the fire blew out before returning to normal when the spirit disappeared about a minute later. The rattled guards were too scared to stay in the residence, and the rest of the Christmas celebration ended abruptly. This one is entitled, Grandma Visits Every Christmas. Every Christmas afternoon, my family, which includes my parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, gather in the living room of my grandma's house to play party games. At some point each year, we are joined by the spirit of my great-grandmother, Dorothy, who passed away some time ago. Her arrival is always heralded in the same way. First, the carved wooden dolphins would sit on top of my grandma's television, a pair to leap into the air and turn somersaults before come crashing to the floor with a thud. Next comes the sound of the door slamming somewhere in the house, followed by the living room lights flickering eerily. It makes the hair on the back of everyone's neck stand up, but rather than feeling scared, most of us find it quite comforting. We miss her, and for those few minutes, it feels like she's still with us. We'll say, hi, Nana, and our star visitor has come to join us. Then it will be over, and we'll go back to exchanging presents or watching a movie. Dorothy loved Christmas Day. Encourage everyone to get involved in games and of charades or having drinks, and it's time when our whole family is together so it's no great surprise that she chooses then to make her appearance. This next one is entitled The Christmas Ghost of Glamis Castle. At Christmas time, a bearded man who flits about at night and hovers over the beds of sleepers is reported. Pale faces that peer through the windows and vanish to the accompaniment of shrieks. There are sounds of hammering as if somebody was putting up scaffolding. It can also be heard in the middle of the night. And these are by no means the greatest of the castle's terrors. A woman that was a guest at the castle one Christmas night awoke to hear the moving of a soft body over the floor of her bedroom in the crack of a bony joint, and then to see the outline of something luminous and horrid in her room. Slowly, she says, the thing, whatever it was, took shape, a body tawny and haunched, arms long and spidery, a large and terrible head covered with a tangled mass of gray hair, a face white and staring, pig-like in formation, malevolent in expression. As she steered at it aghast, it reared itself on its haunches and leered hideously at her. 
Then, shuffling forward, it rolled over and laid sprawled out like some ungainly turtle. At that time, the handle on the door turned and someone entered the room. There was a loud cry, and the whole tower wall's rafters rang with the most appalling screams that she had ever heard. These stories entitled, Santa Stuffs the Stocking. When I was nine years old, I could not get to sleep on Christmas Eve because I was excited about the presents and wondered if my parents had anything to do with the gifts that I received from Santa the year before. That night, it was hot because the heater was on, so I got thirsty. Also, I was wanting to spy. I got out of bed and cracked open my door to make sure no one was out in the living room so that I could get something to drink. When I opened the door, I saw someone bent over. Then he stood up. It was Santa Claus, dressed in red and white get-up. Something strange was that I could see the Christmas lights from the Christmas tree shining through him. He was taking the stockings down off the mantel and placing them on the coffee table. When he started to turn around to put the next stocking on the table, I closed the door and jumped back into bed. The next morning, I woke up and told my sister what I had seen. I told her where he had placed the stockings. When we went into the living room, the stockings were where I said that he put them. We both turned and looked at each other and froze for a moment. But from then on, I have told everyone that I believe in Santa. This next one is entitled The Figure in the Recliner. My mother, to whom I was very close, passed away when I was 17 years old. That same year, I left home, but I met a girl five years later who I will call Karen, and we got married in March the following year. In December, the year after, we were expecting our first child. We were living in a small one-and-a-half bedroom bungalow. There was a fireplace in the living room. My wife and I loved the fireplace and we had it lit almost every night. It was Christmas Eve and we had just finished putting the gifts under the tree and a nice fire gave off a beautiful glow. On the tree, one string of lights, which was supposed to flash, had stopped several days before. It was five minutes to midnight when the fireplace suddenly just about went out and that string of lights started to flash. But the strange thing is, is the other lights stopped flashing. My wife and I were sitting on the floor, and it had become very chilly in the room. I looked over at my recliner, and a figure was sitting there. It was my mother with a big, beautiful smile on her face. My wife, who had never met my mother before, said she could see the same thing. This spirit never spoke, but just kept looking at me and my wife and smiling. At midnight, the fireplace started up again, and the lights on the tree stopped flashing, and the others started flashing again. I again looked over at the chair, and the spirit was gone. No matter what I did to those Christmas lights, they never flashed again. Thank you, my friends, and I hope you enjoyed these ghost stories at Christmas time. Please don't forget to enter the title of your favorite ghost stories from this video down in the comment section. 
And remember to catch the other two videos of more ghost stories. If you like this episode of Ghost Stories and Folklore, be sure to hit the like button. And if you would like more videos from Panady videos in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell for notifications. If you dare. Ha 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 